This hack tip is brought to you by Full Sail University. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morrison. Today we are checking out Wireshark and the internet protocol. So last time on the show, we discussed the lower layer protocol called ARP for address resolution protocol. I figured that we would move on to a few more and get a better feel of what each and every protocol does because honestly, if you don't know what a protocol is and what it does, you probably won't fully understand how to use Wireshark. So up next, we have the internet protocol. Now, while ARP is used with MAC addresses to send data, IP handles most of the traffic for internetwork communication from one device to another. The internet protocol is found on layer three of the OSI model, which is the network layer. So we had the physical data link, and now we have the network layer. Now IP addresses have 32 different bits, and these ID whatever the device is that has that data. The 32 bits are converted into four sets of ones and zeros, which is then converted into base 10, which pretty much is where you get like 192.168.1.1. Now the number notation, that 192.168.1.1, the computer registers the IP address as those 32 bits of ones and zeros, and then we see it as the numbers that make up an IP address that we actually understand. If we didn't, it would just be 32 ones and zeros, and that would be really hard to memorize. Now the first two quarters, those first two, like 192.168, that usually tells you the network address. And the last two, the .1.67 or whatever it might be, those list the host address, so whoever is the actual physical computer. Now I say usually because it's not always the first two that are the network address. These can be determined by looking at a subnet or network mask. If you run across a net mask of 111, like eight ones, eight ones, and then eight zeros, eight zeros, that means that the first two quarters of the network address and the second two are the actual host. So in that case, that would be like 255.255.0.0. Now, if you don't want to remember how many bits are supposed to be the net mask and how many are the device itself, you can look at the network's CIDR notation, or C-I-D-R. I say CIDR because I really like CIDR. This stands for Classless Interdomain Routing Notation. Now for my local network, it's 192.168.0.1, my local computer, and the net mask of 255.255.0.0, my CIDR notation would be 192.168.0.1 slash 16. Now you might remember that from hack tip number 92, I believe it was. We showed you how to use CIDR notation to scan multiple targets in Nmap. So this all stuff always seems to have a way of coming around full circle. You remember CIDR notations from back then? Now you have them again. So now you know how these different IP addresses are built, but let's take a look at Wireshark. Well, first let's dissect this whole IP header packet. This is very similar to what you would see with the ARP header packets, but this time we have IP ones. So you may notice when you go down here, if you look at the second window, you have a section called Internet Protocol Version 4. It has your source up here, whatever the source IP address is, and the destination IP address. So you have all that information right up at the top. Now this packet is gonna give you a ton of really good information, including, and I'll go ahead and list through each and every different version and information uh, on each and every different line. So first off, we have version. Version is gonna tell you what version of IP is used. So in my case, I'm using IPv4, so I see the number four, but it could also be IPv6 if you need. Next, we'll have the header length, and this is going to be 20 bytes, and you'll notice that most of the time, IP is gonna be 20 bytes. It pretty much doesn't change. Down below this, you'll see the type of services that you're using, whatever those might be, the total length of the header and the data included below that, so you'll see total length equals 40, and then an ID number to ID the actual packet. So in this case, my ID number is 18242, so I know exactly which packet I'm using. Now a flag is going to be used if the packet is part of some larger sequence of packets. So down here you see that it says 0x02, don't fragment. That means that there aren't any other fragments of this packet. I'll do some more information on fragments in just a little bit, so hold on to that information. And going a little bit further, we're going to see TTS. 
TTL. Now, if you look at TTL, it says 128. So what exactly does that mean? Well, TTL stands for time to live. This shows you the lifetime of the packet in hops per second. And a little bit more below this, we'll see protocol. So you can notice that the protocol for this IP packet is going to be TCP. And moving on from there, You'll see a header checksum for error detection, the source IP address, the destination IP address, any extra options, and the actual data. Now, moving on from time to live, this tells you how long a packet is going to be alive for and transmitting. If it ends up getting stuck in an error, a packet could end up in a never-ending loop. And anybody out there who has done some programming, done some coding or anything like, like that knows that if you end up in a never ending loop, that can mean really bad things for your computer and for the computing power of it. So that's a big no-no. You don't want your packets to end up in a big loop. So it's very important to know how long a packet is going to go through all the different routers on the internet before it actually just goes kaput. So in this case, I see 128, that means it's pretty much you can just assume that's gonna be 128 routers before it just dies. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit more information about this right after the break, but first, it's time to thank our sponsor. As you know, virtually every industry relies on software technology. Full Sail University, located in Winter Park, Florida, offers bachelor's degree programs that address the need for skilled tech professionals through curriculum that blends code and theory with real-world experience. Offered on campus, the Software Development Bachelor's Degree program teaches programming fundamentals through project-based coursework, allowing students to graduate with multiple completed software products. The Mobile Development Bachelor's Degree, also offered on campus but also online, teaches students how to develop apps and utilities through courses that cover both iOS and Android development. And the Web Design and Development Bachelor's Degree program, also available on campus and online, teaches front-end design, back-end development, along with coding formats, programming languages, and so much more. All the students have hands-on access to technology from day one. You get a laptop computer at an institutional discount, along with relevant software and tools. To learn more about Full Sail's web and technology programs, visit fullsail.edu slash hacktip. We are back with more Wireshark and internet protocol packets. Now let's talk about this IP fragmentation thing because it sounds kind of weird, right? All right, so sometimes an IP packet needs to be split up into multiple parts to allow reliable delivery on various network types. This is based on the MTU, MTU or maximum transmission unit size of the layer two protocol, whichever one it ends up being run on. So if you're running on ethernet, for example, the MTU size is 1500 bytes. So the IP fragmentation would occur if the packet size was over 1500, because you can't fit more packets into it if ethernet only allows you to do 1500 bytes per packet. Does that make sense? Now, when you look at the packet header info for one of these types of IP packets, you'll notice that under the more fragment section, it'll list how many other packets include that data. So under this one, for example, right here, you'll see more fragments is not set and it's set to zero. That means that this packet in particular has no other fragments that are along with it. Now the fragment offset section will also give you a number depending on where the packet falls in the series of fragments. So you can have fragment number one, number two, number three, and so on, and how many bytes are in that packet. It might just happen to be less than 1500 for the header length. Now lastly, you'll notice the more fragment section also says zero once you find the last packet in the series. So if this one was, part of a much, much longer series of packets, this one would still say zero at the very end because it's the last one. Now I think that about wraps it up for fragmentation and internet protocol. I hope that this fully wraps around everything that you need to know about IP and I hope that it helped you understand why in the world all this information is listed down there. Let me know of course what you think. Send me an email or a comment, tips at hack5.org and be sure to check out our sister show, Hack5, for more great stuff just like this. I'll be there reminding you to trust your technolust. Pack, 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 pack.